here at Play Patagonia. My name is Kate. I'll be telling you all about the beautiful sea lions we brought out for you today. We also have my colleague Kate, and she has the pleasure of working with four very beautiful young ladies. Starting off on the far side of the stage with Atlanta, our diva here at Play Patagonia. On the next one, we have got Sydney, often known as Super Sydney or Sydney Square, because she is quite a show off. Winnipeg giving you a lovely wave now. Winnipeg's the clown of the group here at Colchester Zoo. And last but certainly not least, we have Milan, our shy, timid, and somewhat quiet sea lion. So these are the four young ladies we brought out for today's display. We do, of course, have a big sea lion here at Playa Patagonia. Her name is Paris, and she's currently enjoying some tasty fish off show in the houses behind us. Now, one of the things our sea lions would start by clearing up is the differences between sea lions and seals, because quite often, our four young ladies here get mistaken for seals. Now, it's an easy mistake to make because they do look so similar, but one of the key features to look for to help you identify if you're looking at a seal or a sea lion are the small things on either side of their heads. Now, these are, in fact, earlobes. They are brown in colour. They're about the size of your thumbnail, and they stick out a bit like Shrek's or Wayne Rooney's ears, and this is how you know that you're looking at a sea lion. The key difference here, of course, is that a seal's ears are completely internal. So when looking at a seal, you see nothing on the outside, you simply see a small hole leading to the internal ear. So that's one of the differences between the two. There are a couple more. For this, I want everyone to hold their hands up in the air for me. Pop your hands up in the air, let's have a look at your hands. Right, now, have a look at your own hands. Look at the size of your own hand, because what you're looking at there is roughly the same size as a seal's front flipper. Now, if you compare that to the sea lions, well, you can see their front flippers are absolutely huge. They're around five to six times bigger than Kate's hand. And the reason for this difference in size comes down to what those front flippers are required to do. And when a sea lion moves through the water, they use those powerful front flippers in a breaststroke-like motion to help propel themselves along. When a seal moves through the water, it's the lower half of the body and the hind flippers that does all the hard work, and those front flippers are solely for steering, and this is why they are so reduced in size. Now, of course, another difference between the two, the way in which they move about on the land. So for this, we've taken Sydney off of her stand, and she's going to show you just how agile she is when it comes to moving around. So you'll notice that she walks on all fours. She also has two smaller hind flippers combined with those large front flippers, which she will rotate under her body as she goes. And this means she can quite easily keep up with the same speed as your average human being. Compare that to the way a seal moves around. And luckily for us, uh, we do have a one and only sea lion here at Colchester Zoo that is marvellous when it comes to the seal impressions and quite a clown as well. So we're going to use, so let's use Winnipeg for this one. Now watch Winnipeg as she does her very best impression of a seal. So here we go, this is Winnipeg's favourite behaviour, sliding around on her belly, moving around just like a seal by thrusting the front of her body forward and then dragging her bottom along behind her. And the best way to describe a seal's movement on the land is a little bit like a giant slug or caterpillar. So you compare that to the agile and elegant sea lion, and I'm sure you'll agree there's quite a difference between the two. So that's a few of the differences between the sea lions that we have here at Colchester Zoo, and of course they're very closely related cousins to seals. But some questions do arise, why in fact are they called sea lions? Well of course, as their name would suggest, they are ferocious predators, they truly are the lions of the sea. Some species, the males will have a fur around their neck, and of course this mane of fur looks very similar to that of a lion's mane, so that's another reason why they're known as sea lions. But Winnipeg would like to demonstrate to you, most importantly, why she truly is a lion of the sea. So are you ready, Winnipeg? For this we need not your eyes but your ears. When you're ready, Winnie, take it away. She's the lion of the sea, and you'll notice that when it comes to vocalising, she really does roar like a lion. So, uh, ferocious predators, fairly high up the food chain, but unfortunately not at the very top of it. So, they're not only a predator, but a prey species as well. And what Winnipeg can demonstrate for you now is one of the key animals that she and her friends out there in the wild would have to worry about when it comes to dinner time. Now, I want you guys to have a look, because Winnipeg's quite the impressionist, and see if you can guess the animal that Winnipeg is doing an impression of. Now we'll give her a few moments to get a nice swim up, and then she's gonna do the wonderful behavior. Anyone have any ideas what type of animal that is? Shark. Kate knows, but unfortunately she's not part of the game. Stunned silence. Would you like to see it one more time? Should we try one more time? And this time I'll give you a clue. So they're big. 
They're black and white. Yeah. Kill them and every year, people go all the way to SeaWorld to have a look at these animals. So has anyone got any ideas now? Kill whales. Oh, I'm getting a whale screamed out of me over here. Exactly. That's the impression Winnie Peg was doing. So she's doing a killer whale impression, throwing herself out of the water, reaching into the air. Winnipeg's decided she's a little bit shy this afternoon. So we're going to move on with another impression of one of the two predators that they have out there in the wild. And for this one, we're going to use Sydney. So we've already seen the killer whales. Sydney's going to show us the second of those two ferocious predators. Vlad wants to get involved as well. She's a little bit impatient. You'll notice that when the girls are sitting quite nicely on the stand, Kate is constantly rewarding them and reinforcing that behaviour of sitting nicely and waiting until they're asked to do something next. So we're going to put Milan back on her stand. We're going to ask Milan to wait patiently, like the lady that she is. And we're going to ask Sydney to do that wonderful impression. So here it is, holding her flipper high out of the water there. Anyone got any idea what this is an impression of? A shark, exactly, and a dolphin by the look of it now as well, <laughs> So we're doing a shark impression there, holding her flipper up, and of course in the wild, these are two of the Patagonian sea lion's key predators, so great white sharks and killer whales. Now fear not for these young ladies, because they are very well adapted to escaping from their predators. Now you've already seen they've got those big powerful front flippers, which can help them reach speeds of about 30 miles per hour. There is something else they can do, however, if they're having trouble out swimming that predator, and that is displaying a behaviour known as porpoising. Now when the sea lions porpoise, they jump <coughs> in and out of the water, twisting and turning as they go. And hopefully you are going to get a lovely example of our sea lions porpoise in this afternoon. So you'll notice they jump out of the water, they're very agile, they can make sudden changes of direction, which will hopefully help to confuse any shark or killer whale so that it loses track of them and they can continue their escape to safety. Now here at Colchester Zoo, we are training our sea lions to porpoise in sync. So you'll notice at the moment, being very impressive, they're all leaving the water at the same time and porpoise in place in the same direction. And every time they do this behaviour correctly, Kate is giving them lots of tasty fish and telling them what good girls they are. And this is how we train all of our animals here at the zoo. It's a very popular method of training known as positive reinforcement. So put very simply, you reward and reinforce the good behaviour and you simply ignore any of their bad behaviour. So the sea lions do the behaviour correctly, Kate rewards them with the tasty fish. If they would decide to go for a swim or if they didn't want to take part this afternoon, that's absolutely fine. We don't force them to do anything they don't want to do. We will, however, just pause for a moment or two. The sea lions realise nothing's come of that situation. And then, of course, we can ask them to try again or we can move on to something a little bit different. Now, this porpoising behaviour that you're seeing, it is also a form of play. And because it's a form of play, it does occur in a zoo environment just as it would out there in the wild. So it's not something we've had to train the sea lions how to do from scratch, but we have put the behaviour on cue. And if you manage to tear your eyes away from the sea lions for just a moment, you'll notice that Kate's actually stood in her very best Saturday night fever pose. And this is because this is the signal for the sea lions that we would like them to start porpoising. And this is how we really keep the sea lions stimulated and we engage their minds as well as their bodies. And lots of the behaviours that you see throughout the display, simple as asking the sea lions to wait to go into the water, are all based on signals and cues. So the sea lions have to watch the trainer very closely they need to pick up on the signals that are being presented to them and then they have to respond correctly. So this really keeps their mind working and challenges them on a daily basis. Now you've seen that lovely porpoising behaviour that we do with our sea lions. This is a great way of keeping them physically fit. But of course, as their keepers, it's our responsibility to make sure that they are in good health as well. And this is the primary reason why we train all of our animals here at the zoo. So this is what Kate's doing at the moment, starting with Milan. She's having a stroke of her body and checking her flippers. So by asking the sea lion to lift the flippers one at a time, we can check the undersides, make sure there's no cuts or grazes. And by stroking all over the body, we can obviously make sure there's no lumps. Or and once again, once we learn to start the you correctly, Kate rewards her. You'll notice she's also rewarding the other sea lions as well because they are waiting nice and patiently on their stands. So it's important to remember to reinforce this behaviour just as much as the sea lion that you're working with. So once again, she's having a look at Winnie's flippers. Now she's having a look inside Winnipeg's mouth. Now this is a very important behaviour that we do on a daily basis. Of course, the sea lions can suffer from things like mouth ulcers and wobbly teeth but most commonly they can get bits of fish
wishbone stuck between their teeth, which of course left untreated, they could wear down into the gum and cause a more serious problem. So by checking inside the sea lion's mouth on a daily basis, we can make sure there's nothing really unusual going on in there. And of course, once again, this is something the sea lions are more than happy to cooperate with. They will not only open their mouths for us, they will allow us to have a little bit of a prod and a poke to make sure there's no wobbly teeth. And uh, believe it or not, our sea lions will even allow us to brush their teeth so that we can make sure they're nice and clean. <laughs> and the final way that Kate's demonstrating here, we refer to it as the head twist. Now this allows us a good look into Winnipeg's eyes and ears. You can see as Kate's demonstrating at the moment. It also means that if any of our sea lions did develop problems, they are trained to accept eye drops. So by having the head turn nice and flat to one side, we can pop the drops on the eye and they're not going to run down the side of the sea lion's face. So in the long term, the animal will benefit from the treatment and the training. And of course, just to finish up with some fun and games, but it's very important that we keep our sea lions fit, we play lots of games with them, and most importantly, we bond with them as well. As their trainers, it's not only important that we know and trust them, but it's crucial that they know and trust us. And this is, of course, accomplished by playing and interacting with them on a daily basis through all the things that they enjoy. So we started off with a little bit of fetch, but once again, Kate's going to make that a bit trickier, moving on to a behaviour known as toy retrieval. So if you watch Kate closely, she will tap her leg twice as she approaches each sea lion, and this is how she can then ask the sea lion to go into the water and find another toy. So once again, this is a behaviour that is worked around a signal. The sea lions have to be focusing on Kate, they have to watch out for that two taps of the leg, and as soon as they're presented with that signal, into the water they go to see what else they can find to bring back to Kate. And once again, once they've done the behaviour correctly, you'll notice she is rewarding them. Lots of tasty fish, Frau four little superstars today. Well, let's talk just quite a bit about them. If they have taken your fancy, we've got Atlanta the diva on the end with the blue toy in her mouth. She's our prettiest sea lion, but very stubborn, just like any diva, she always likes to get her own way. Sydney in the middle with the yellow ring toy. As I said, this one truly lives her life by the motto, anything you can do, I can do better. Milan, said she's quite shy and timid, she's also quite a slow sea lion. Doesn't like to be rushed, Milan, has to do everything at her own pace, which between you and me is quite often snail pace. And Winnipeg, who's just made her way up onto the lump with the pink tub toy. As I say, our clown here at Player Patagonia, but Winnipeg always gives 110%. So if they've taken your fancy and you would like to adopt one, call into guest services and they can answer any questions you may have. But for now, from all of us here at Player Patagonia, thank you very much for coming down and joining us. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your day here at Colchester Zoo.